CITs seem like a great alternative to directly investing in real estate because it's a lot less trouble. It's a lot less hassle. All you have to do is literally buy stock, essentially, and you get the benefits of real estate ownership without having to deal with tenants, without having to worry about the liquidity because you can easily buy or sell the REIT and you just get the money. It's a really passive investment. But the question is, are they actually better than real estate? And my answer is actually no. And let me break this down and tell you why that's the case. So first of all, if you don't know what an REIT is, it's a real estate investment trust. It's essentially a company that's publicly traded that owns real estate. It's just like a stock or an ETF that you could invest in and it pays a dividend. Now, there's some regulations around REITs where they have to pay, I think it's 80% or 90% of the profits they make to the shareholders as dividends. So there are some legal requirements around that. But the whole point of it is that you can essentially think of it as a stock that you buy that is a company that owns real estate and does all the real estate management and the buying of the assets for you and that you collect the profits of that. That's really the best way to think about that. Now. The thing about REITs is what is the return on this essentially dividend paying stock? The returns are typically around eight to 10%. That's kind of the average there. It's going to be really close to what you would say the average is for the S&P 500, uh, depending on when you measure, but maybe a little bit better performance. It depends on, on when you look at the timeline there. And there's a lot of people that have studied this, but you can say that it's probably about on par or slightly above the S&P 500 or just a blanket stock investing in index fund. So there is some advantage there in, in the sense that it might be a better investment, but we're really looking at probably eight to 10% returns. You make money essentially in two ways from REITs. One is the dividends that they're going to pay you. So they're going to take the profits that they're making from the real estate and they have to distribute those out. And so if it's a really profitable quarter, then you're going to obviously get a higher dividend or they might adjust that dividend based on the profitability. But that's the general way that you make money on that, which might be six, 7%, 5%, somewhere around there of the price of the stock. So your return on your investment. The second way is from that stock value or that REIT value going up over time, which can happen if the assets appreciate and it becomes more valuable, especially if it's paying a very high dividend, then obviously the value of that will go up in order to compensate because you couldn't have a REIT that was paying, let's say a 20% dividend out there. Everyone would buy it, which would drive the price up, which would give you a profit as well. So that's how you can make money in your REIT. Now let's compare this to real estate because a lot of people are going to say, OK, well, that makes a lot of sense. It doesn't make sense to buy my own real estate and to own real estate and have to go through all the transaction costs and the hassles of tenants and property management companies, all of these things. I get it. But let's just look and compare this by first looking at the four ways you make money in real estate investment. Okay, So the four ways you make money in real estate investment, the first one is cash flow. Cash flow means that after you pay the expenses, whatever rent is left over, that is the money that's cash flow. That's money you put in your pocket. Right? So for example, let's say that you had some property and the mortgage payment is a thousand bucks a month and there's some other expenses, taxes, insurance, fees, so a little bit maintenance on the property and it averages out to be maybe $1,600 a month of the total amount. And let's say that you're able to rent it out to a tenant for $1,800 a month. Your cash flow would be $200 a month. That is your return there. Now, if you bought a property 100% cash, obviously you wouldn't have a mortgage, so you'd have a higher cash flow and a higher return. So a lot of times when we look at real estate, when people naively look at real estate, they only take that into account. They just assume you're buying it cash. Now, the thing about real estate is that we're usually gonna buy it leveraged. And so that's gonna mean that our, the returns are gonna be calculated a little bit differently. So that's what we're basing this off of. So the very first one that you make money in real estate is through cash flow. The second one is through the principal pay down. So if you have a loan on the property, when you're paying down the principal, the portion that you're paying down that's principal, that's like money in your pocket. That's like money in the bank because you're paying down the amount on that loan. So it's creating equity in the property. You can consider that to be profit. The third way is through depreciation, at least in the US, and it probably varies by different countries. There's tax laws that say that you can do straight line depreciation of a property of the structural value of the property by 27 and a half years. So that means you can take the value of the property, not the land part, but just the property itself divided by 27.5 and show that as a loss 
on your tax return. Now, there's some different ways that this is handled and it depends on how much money you make and how much the depreciation is. But essentially, for a lot of people, it can result in a decent savings of taxes. And then the fourth way is through appreciation. So if that property goes up in value, you make money. Now, with a real estate investment, the leverage appreciation is what we're after in the sense that we are going to get appreciation on that property. Let's say that property goes up three and a half percent or four percent, which is about the average per year. Then if we own that property 100 percent cash, we're going to get a three and a half to four percent return on that because we own the property. But if we have it leveraged, we're actually going to get a multiplier to that. So if we put a down payment, we put 10 percent down or 20 percent down. We're going to actually get a multiplier on that because that appreciation is magnified by that leverage. All right, we'll get to that in a little bit here, but those are kind of the basic ways that you make money with real estate that you own. All right, so let's talk about what kind of returns because we want to compare REITs to real estate investment. We need to know what the returns differences are. We said the REITs might be eight to 10% returns on average. Okay, some do better, some do worse. But what about just doing regular real estate investment if you bought the properties yourself? Okay, so if we run some basic numbers here, I'm going to give you just a scenario. Let's say that you had a 100K property and that 100K property, you're going to put 10% down or $10,000 down, you're going to borrow $90,000 from the bank or 90% of the value from the bank. Now, we're going to assume in this case that the rent that comes in from this property, because you're going to rent it out, it's an investment property, that's going to cover the mortgage payment on the property and then the expenses. So we're going to say it's going to cover the mortgage, the taxes, insurance, if there's an HOA fee, property management company fee, and maintenance on the property. We're gonna assume it covers all that stuff and it comes out to a wash. So it covers it all. You don't end up having to pay anything, but you don't get any money in your pocket. And that's the scenario we're gonna look at. So now we're gonna look at the four ways you make money in real estate and see what the return is based on that. So first of all, cash flow is the first way. How much cash flow are you getting? Zero. You're getting a big fat goose egg because all of that cash flow, all that rent that you're receiving is going to pay the mortgage, and then the other expenses on the property. So essentially, you can think of it as the tenants paying the mortgage for you and, and paying the expense on the property for you. That's one way to think of it. But cash flow is going to be zero. The next way you make money in real estate is principal pay down. It depends on the interest rate, but you're going to approximately on a $90,000 loan pay about $500 of principal in the first year. Now that will go up every single year, but we'll just say in the first year, you're gonna pay $500. Okay, so we got $500 of profit so far. The next thing is the depreciation. So remember, that's that tax benefit. We're gonna be pretty conservative on that and say that for most people with a $100,000 property, if they did depreciation on it, they might save let's say $300 a year on their taxes. So it's 500 plus 300 so far as 800. And then the last thing is appreciation. Now the average appreciation, we're going to use a very conservative number of 3.5%, even though properties have been going up much higher than that. But that's a really simple, very believable number. It's below the average, which is usually around 4%. It's kind of the estimate there. So we say it's three and a half percent. So that means that that property is going to go up from $100,000 to $103,500, which is a $3,500 profit right there. So if we add it all up, we're talking about $3,500 from the appreciation, $500 from the principal pay down, that's $4,000, and then $300 from the tax benefit that we get. So that's $4,300. So what's the return on our investment? Well, in this case, we put $10,000 into the property because that's all we put down is $10,000 down payment. And now we gain $4,300 on our $10,000 investment. That's a 43% return. Now that's was using some very conservative numbers. So that's why real estate is so much of a better investment than an REIT. Yes, you can buy an REIT. Yes, it is passive. There are some pros to that, but you're going to really cap out the returns at 8, 10% on average. Whereas even with it, with not even a great deal on a real estate property that you buy yourself with those numbers that we calculated, you're looking at a 43% return. Now it depends on how much you put down. It depends on how good of a deal that you get, but you could be looking at anywhere from 30 to 60% returns pretty easily in real estate on your very first year of owning a property. So this is a, a definitely a simplified model, but I just want you to see how much more powerful it is to invest in real estate versus an REIT. See, I think a lot of people, when they look at REITs, they're like, all right, well, you know, an REIT might do an eight to 10% return, but if I buy a property, the cash flow on that is around 
maybe seven to eight percent. And so it makes more sense to do an REIT and not have all that headache. But what they're not thinking about is the leverage. You can't leverage an REIT. They might leverage within the REIT and buying the property, but you can't leverage it as an individual purchaser of real estate. You can leverage that and you can get the tax advantages of that. And you're getting the benefit from the principal pay down. You're getting all these other benefits that you don't get when you buy an REIT. Now, you are sacrificing liquidity. That is very true. And it's not as passive. Although if you want some help in actually creating true passive income from real estate, that's something that I specialize in. Click the link down below and book a free 15 minute call with me or a member of my team. And we'll go over this. We'll set up a financial freedom plan so you can actually have financial independence and become financially free. I did that at 33 years old. I have about $15,000 of totally passive income coming in from real estate every single month. And I can show you exactly how I did it and how you can do the exact same thing. Just click the link down below to book a call. So anyway, guys, the whole point here is that if you want to really generate true passive income and really build your wealth, REITs are not the way to do it. You're going to need to do a real estate investment. And there's a whole bunch of other topics we didn't even have time to talk about in terms of that, some tax advantages, especially in regards to 1031 exchanges. If you sell an REIT and you make money from that, you're going to have to pay capital gains taxes on that. Whereas when I have my property go up a whole bunch that I've bought myself and then I sell that property, I don't actually sell it. I do an exchange and exchange it for a bigger property and I don't have to pay any capital gains taxes on that. Or I might do a cash out refinance and get my money back out of it and never have to pay taxes on that money either. So there's a lot of different ways that you can structure things with real estate. You just need to know how to do it. So again, like I said, if you're really interested in this and you want to find out more, click the link down below, book a free 15 minute call. And if you found this video to be helpful, leave a thumbs up and let me know, leave a comment down below. Any questions you have, leave a comment as well.